Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue's. Island Siege is a two-player game of these forts and ships that are battling back and forth. And the whole game comes down to rolling dice and being able to fight people off and what cards you're going to play and this hand management that you have. And I got to say, it really surprised me by how good it was. This is a hidden gem. I had a lot of fun with it. I've heard some people say that it can go on a little bit too long sometimes. It hasn't been my experience, but be aware that it has been the experience of some people. But for me, I haven't had that experience. But for me, what I've had is a very tactical. You're making these decisions and you got to kind of think a couple steps ahead because you're like, wow, they're about to finish this thing off on me. How can I kind of combat that? No pun intended. There's two ways to win. You have an economic victory where you get 20 coins. And if, the longer the game goes on, the more likely that's going to be to happen. Or you can totally destroy somebody. You do that with the combat and fighting. There's no take that per se, even though you will be attacking people. You don't draw a card that says, wow, I can beat you and take five points away from you. Instead, you're rolling dice and you're tactically setting up your ships and your forts, hopefully in the best strategic way. Now, you're only stuck with what you draw, and that's kind of some of the luck into it. But with that said, it's kind of the nature of the beast of what you're going to have. I really like this one. I felt like it had really good decisions. I felt it played quick. You know, most of my games are done in about 15, 20 minutes. I felt like I was getting like a whole experience of a game and tactical decision making in a very short period of time. I really enjoyed that. I think this could be a filler for a lot of people. You know, if, you, if you're in one of those 45 minute games, I'd probably just, you know, end it rather quickly if I could because you don't want to drag on that long. But I think for a 15, 20 minute game, that this game really works. And if you're playing two players and you don't mind that in, that interactive player interaction, I think it's going to blow your mind of how good this game is in such a little box with such few components. And it does a really, really good job of that. So I'm going to tell you to seek this one out. Check out Island Siege. This is one to kind of, maybe if you're playing two players and you like that direct combat, to go after and seek this one out. Definitely keep it for me. Liked it quite a bit. Here's Island Siege, which gives you a really dynamic cover here with these cannons going off at these boats. It's a thin box, real small, very portable, and inside you're going to see a bunch of stuff. So you're going to have to be stickering some stuff yourself. You're going to have some extras here. It's going to be the player board. It's, you know, flimsy, but you're just laying it down in front of you, and you have enough there for two players. You'll see the rule book, which I'll go over in a few minutes. You're going to have these plastic dice that you're going to sticker yourself. Yeah. This money is just phenomenal. There's not a whole lot of it, but this is really great metal money. You're going to have some cubes here of different colors. Uh, they don't exactly match the, the cards perfectly. The black and the gray is really hard. I wish they would use something other than white, black, and gray. And then you're going to have these red, these little meeples and, and things in here that you're going to have. You know, nothing to write home about. The little ship is kind of neat, but we'll see that in the playthrough. And then you're going to get a bunch of cards. The cards are really good. I like these cards a lot. I like the way they feel. You know, for the most part, you're just playing them down and utilizing them. And you have, you know, fairly good compartmentalization here. Okay, here's Island Siege. This is going to be the components on the front. You're going to notice right off the bat, this is a very skinny rule book. And you're going to have this setting it up with pictures here that are provided, which are fantastic. And playing the game. Really, there's three phases of the game. You'll jump right in. The first phase is just really check to see if somebody won the game. The second phase is we're going to be playing the game. And you're going to have different aspects of it right here. And the third is where you're going to take your actions and kind of what you're going to do and, and how that's going to play out, which you're going to see it's going to be much longer than the first two. And they're going to have kind of the battle system that's going to be going on here, which is really easy once you jump into it. But there's plenty. These are all examples. That's what all this is. So don't make it look like it's too complicated. Just examples of how to do it over and over again so you understand it. And at the back, there's a quick reference, which is really super, super handy for players. So this is what your player board's going to look like when you're set up. You have three little blocks here. You're going to have three workers on each one. You're going to have your ship here. You're going to have your starting fort. Now, I have, do have to admit, it's really hard to tell the difference between gray and black. Luckily, they put different flag shapes on here. I'm pretty sure they had to. And you'll set up your starting fort, which will probably be here in front of you. And then you're ready to kind of play the game, and you're set up and ready to go. The first thing you do on a turn is you check to see if you've won the game. You can win one of two ways. You could have collected 20 coins, and then you win. Or your board is completely empty of workers, and you have no more workers to play out. They're called colonists in this game. Then what you'll do is each player will take a colonist and put it on every fort that they have. If you had multiple forts, let's say, then you would put two of these guys out. If you had three forts, 
or so forth, you would put more out. So if I had three, I would have put all three of my guys out. So the more forts you are that you have, the quicker you can put these guys out. Remember, that's one of the victory conditions at the beginning of your turn. If this is completely empty, then you'll win the game. At the beginning of the game, you have drawn three cards that will be your hand of cards. And you have three types of cards. You have the forts, which I've already shown you. You're going to have the buildings, which can be built. And you have ships that can be built. The forts are going to be very easy to build. You're literally just going to lay them down right here. And you will take, in this case, it has a gray flag printed on there. So you will take one gray from the bag from the general supply and you will place it on there. And then anything else that you have in your own personal supply, you can put on there and you're going to get a coin for each cube that you put on there. And those are going to represent your defense, which I'll get to in just a second. So the second kind of card you can build is a building. At the top, it tells you whatever fort you build it on must have one meeple on it. And when I build it, I get a coin and a black cube, whatever color it is here. In this place, when I have this, whenever you attack, you add one uh, flag to your result, which is great. So let's say I wanted to build it here, which had one colonist on it. I would take that colonist, set it here. I would add my one coin to my collection and I would take my black cube and I would set it up here anywhere on these four squares. So I would set it right there just for illustration purposes. The third type of card I have to build is a ship. So when I build this, I have to take two workers and add them on here and I would get received three coins. And then whenever I battle, when I roll this symbol, I add one of that flag to my result. So I'd put this here, I would take two of these colonists down to put on this, and now I would receive my $3, and now I would have my ship next to my player aid in, if and when I wanted to attack. So instead of building something, let's say you're ready to go out and attack, and I'll pretend like some of these are not mine. So I'm going to pretend like this fort right here is not my fort. So what I would do is I would take my ship, put it here, just signifying that this is the one I'm going to go after. I would then roll my dice and I would try to attack it. Now this one has white, two gray, and a black. Oh, look, that's exactly what I was able to roll. A white, two gray, and a black. So theoretically, I could bust all that through. Now let's say I didn't roll that. Let's say I rolled this instead. Well, then I would activate any ship cards that I would have. In this case, add one of the gray to your results. That could add a gray to my result. If I didn't have any ships, it's really not that useful. Right here it says on two ships, I can destroy an opponent's ship if he happens to have one. And that's on my player board. If I rolled one of these. So after I assign my dice, and a lot of times you'll roll, let's say, three whites, and you won't have you know exactly what you need, I can re-roll as many dice as I want. Think of Yahtzee. And see if I get what I want. Now these can be used on your second direct hit, which is what I can do now. And this can be any color I want. In this case, I have rolled two of them. So I could wipe out the white that I originally rolled and maybe like a gray and a black or something. Here's the caveat though. If there's two of these in a row next to each other that are the same color, it requires one more to defeat that. So in order for me to be, defeat these two grays, I would in fact need dice roll of at least three grays in order to beat those. Sometimes you'll get forts like this where the gray is in front of the white. That means on the first attack, I could only ever take out the gray. Even if I rolled a gray and a white, I couldn't take out these two on the first hit. This one has to go first, maybe that one, and this one will be left over. So that's the two caveats when you're doing the battles, is if they're side by side and they're the same color, it would take one more to defeat them. Or if they're behind them, the one behind can't be killed in the first attack. It would have to be killed in the second attack, either by a matching color or one of these direct hits. So that's kind of how that works. Other than that, the game is really, really, really simple to play. You'll be flying through it in no time whatsoever. Who should buy this game? I would say anybody looking for a two-player game. You're going to want two players because two-player only. You're going to want tactical decision-making and that direct player interaction where you will be attacking each other. But it's not a take that game. You're just drawing a card and being able to slap it down on somebody. There are decision-making. If you just go after somebody haphazardly, you might win, but you are risking a lot in this game. So, so the decisions you're making are very important, but it's not a brain burner either. You're just having to play with what you have. That's going to be very appealing to a lot of people. So if you meet that criteria and it sounds like something that would be interesting to you, I would say buy this one side on scene and get it. And I think that you're really, really going to enjoy it. Absolute keeper for me. I'll keep this around quite a bit. Thanks for watching the video. I really appreciate you tuning in. If you liked it, please like it and hit that little subscribe button. That really helps out the channel. Let's us know that you're getting the videos that you want. If you agreed or disagree with what I said, feel free to comment below. I'd love to hear what you have to say. And I promise that I will comment back. Thanks for watching and everybody else keep